Okay, welcome everybody. This is quite a special video because it covers some more advanced topics than usual. Um, as you know, I have invested a lot of work and effort into, first of all, documenting um, live trades based on the market causality. I did this over roughly two years, more than 250 videos, uh, several p videos per trade. So you can see the upload time, it's all <coughs> directly uploaded after the recording. Um, and as you know as well, I was able to achieve a very, very high win-loss ratio. So the vast majority of those trades um, worked out as expected. However, a small number, small percentage of trades, uh, a handful only over this long time, um, didn't really work or the timing was off too much. And I will actually concentrate on the reasons for, even though this is rare, why this can happen even if you trade based on market causality. So I'm basically talking about its limitations. Um, remember that in trading, it's all about the edge. In order to be able to compete with the smart money as shown, you need to really have an edge. Otherwise, you will definitely join the vast majority of losing market participants. And uh, obviously, uh, the good thing is as well that the market causality allows you to understand when you can compete with the smart money and when you cannot compete. So I put together this agenda and I will focus in this video on one particular scenario, namely the dumb money switch, in which, ca in case of which uh, it's a good idea to react to the changing market structure. So yeah, uh, keep in mind on the other channel I have pres uh, documented my personal style of trading um, the market causality. Now obviously this is not the only style, I've said that many times. You know other people will approach it differently. They will maybe trade only long term <coughs> uh, or they will um, uh, pick certain uh, automated strategies based on the current market structure. There are many many ways. I have shown you my way of doing it. Yeah, which often um, is focused, for example, on cheap entries, on pullback entries, uh, and so on. <coughs> These videos are all there still for you to see. Then I also have uh, made a number of videos explaining the market causality itself. Uh, you know, I've covered like some of the more basic topics like uh, stop runs, position runs, news, plausibility, uh, smart money boldness, some short term games, um, the H4 dynamics. Uh, support, fake support, fake resistance, um, uh, you know, uh, pre-counter uh, run moves, all these kind of, uh, these kind of topics. You can see nice videos on these topics already. Just keep in mind that even if you are a causality trader, um, we will never be on the same level as the smart money algos. Okay, uh, let me let me go to the next slide. Remember that the smart money, they have an execution advantage, they have a speed advantage, they have a transaction cost advantage. Y you know, we are on the buy side, whether you are a, a private trader, a fund, a, home, a family office or whatever, you're on the buy side, you're a price taker. The smart money is on the other side. They are the price makers, okay? They earn, uh, you know, transaction costs for making a market. We on the buy side we pay this transaction cost. And obviously we're not part of the smart money cartel. We're not part of their dark pool, which coordinates the algorithms. Okay, we are still on the other side of the game. You have to understand that. S but that's okay. I mean, the market causality allows you to at least, uh, you know, be able to not always fall victim to all the tricks. And if you work on it, you have the chance to become a good trader and to not not be part of the losing majority in the market which is amazing in itself now um so i'm focusing here on the limitations of the market causality by the way i use mk because i'm german and mark in german it would be marked causalität written with a k that's why i use mk in instead of mc um so the market causality really covers the actual structure on a macro and micro level, yeah? 
where are the target positions where are the stop accumulations uh, wh what about the range where are the plateaus what's the plausibility etc 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 and in general um, as you know as long as you plan your entries well and you place yourself on the opposite side than the majority you have good chances of being on the other side of the losing market participants however first of all the situations where the dumb money is allowed to win if that wouldn't be the case obviously then you know the market price could not really move anywhere uh, and there are also uh, scenarios in which actually the smart money algos basically have no other choice than to let the, the money win in that particular scenario and these are the exceptions okay the base case is the opposite base case is stop run position run going after the dumb money okay however in this video as you will see <coughs> i will focus on this scenario the so-called dumb money switch basically you are on a trade or in a position and the, the dumb money suddenly switches all from one side to the other from long to short or from short to long from green to red or from red to green and I will show specific examples in the market. Um, you will like it. <coughs> now there are other scenarios. Uh, one is that, for example, there are news are coming and the news results are clearly in one direction and they are so far away from the expectation that the smart money basically, in order to maintain some plausibility, needs to price it in, even though some of the dumb money then will get into profit. Okay, that exists. It's very rare, but it exists. If the boldness is high, they will move the price against the dumb money regardless of the results. But for that to happen, there needs to it need to be needs to be worth it. So basically, there needs to be a lot of dumb money on one side, for example. Yeah. <coughs> so that's why I wrote uh, with low smart money bullets. So if the boldness is low, the dumb money tolerance is high. Uh, then there is the, the well-known order range order range scenario. So if the market went through a trend period and then the price on the higher time frames is far away, then obviously at some point the price needs to breathe, so to speak. And can grip back up into the range and go for the dumb money which tries to jump on the trend at uh, expensive prices <laughs> that's why i always say okay warning this market is in an outer range scenario because the implication is the high money the, the dumb money tolerance is high so for example if the price came down a lot and then suddenly uh, some dumb money shorties jump on the price um you know um excuse me so suddenly some the money long is jump on the price when it's really really low and the main target clouds have been taken out they may be lucky because you know the the smart money algos may prioritize moving the price up and taking out the stops of the shorties who are trying to ride the trend and this may enable some of these participants some of these versatile traders to exceptionally have a winning trade yeah but for them that's really the exception understand that um then there are also Scenarios, black swan is scenarios where, for example, there are unscheduled comments and, you know, the the causality bias is too low. So the smart money algos cover as much range as they can. They do fish bars, house cleaning, especially now, for example, with a cable Brexit. You have to be careful because, as I predicted, yeah, there can be fish moves just to take out like some short and medium term stop accumulations. <laughs> and in that uh, process, sometimes some of the dumb money positions are actually led into profit. Now. It should also be emphasized that most of the time, the dumb money doesn't manage to cash in that temporary profit. Yeah. So that's another thing. They don't know about this manipulation, so they think you know the, the price will go further in the direction, and then they see all their P and L vanish again with a counter move. Yeah. So that's another story whether the dumb money actually manages to close at profit or not. Most of the time, it doesn't. First of all, most of the time. Um, the dumb money is uh, led into a loss, and then secondly, if they are into profit in one of these scenarios shown here, most of the time they don't manage to take the profit. <laughs> there are other uh, scenarios, for example, when the s there's a stop uh, uh, run scenario and suddenly the dumb money pulls away the stops. So, as you know, the algos don't run behind them, they go the other way. But, uh, you know, that's for another video. <laughs> so, for now, just keep in mind uh, basically those, those four. The dumb money switch, I will explain in this video. News results whereby, uh, you know, the smart money needs to maintain possibility and let some uh, the money win. And out of range uh, where, you know, the price is really overstretched. And then at the very end, after the main target r stops have been taken, some the money jumps in and, you know, it's lucky to, to win a bit. And of course, Black Swan events, they can happen anytime, yeah, unscheduled. Uh, so next to all the 
scheduled economic announcements, there can always be comments by politicians, etc., which are used by the smart money algos to conduct stop runs. These are the reasons why also, as a causality trader, okay, even though I wouldn't contradict the opinion that the market causality may be the closest you get to a so-called holy grail, still, you cannot just break, uh, break all the rules. You cannot. You need to have some risk management in place. You need to understand position sizing and so on. But of course, all this de depends on your pat particular trading style, how you try to implement your trading in, uh, in the context of the market causality, okay? But as a general rule, yes, you, even if you're an aggressive trader, you need to have uh, like, you know, a general plan in place without question, yes? Because you can do a, a good trade and be on the right side. And for example, then there is suddenly a black story right now. It's not the base case, it's the exception, but it can happen. And you don't want like a big chunk of your profits being eaten by one of those scenarios because they will come now and then, you know? Like, um, <laughs> that's the reason why as a trader, as I said before, you need to be able to play the offensive as well as the defensive. Okay. All right. So what I will do now is um, something I did not do before. Uh, I will basically show one market, namely pound dollar, uh, from February this year onwards, um, and how it actually evolved. And I will show it on the four-hour time frame. In between, I add some uh, fifty-minute charts and also day charts to explain certain other dynamics but um, I think this will help you a lot to understand what the base case is uh, how it normally moves um, how the market structure normally um, unfolds but also then when we come to the money switch what you have to be careful about if you're a causality trader <coughs> excuse me okay so I'm looking forward to this because this will help, I think, many of my followers to understand what this is all about. Okay, so this was um, on the... Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, this is January. So this is a cable on a forward chart. Look, we see what's going on. The price came up a lot. And then the dumb money goes on the long side and tries to buy. Now they enter the market very expensively. Already the price came up a lot. They're entering the trend in one direction at a very late stage. You can see here the buying position. So they 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 think that there will be a breakout to the upside above the high, and you know the cable will increase further. And you can uh, so basically what you know is that in such scenarios the base case is that the smart money algos detect those buyers and push the price below their entry positions going for the stops. <laughs> this is what uh, what happened there. Okay, so these are those kind of trades I've documented, okay? Clear setups, uh, high confidence setups where you enter yourself at good prices uh, against, you know, what in theory should be, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, demand. But as you know, supply and demand is a fairy tale, it's cuckoo land. These days, foreign exchange is completely dominated by the manipulation of this smart money algos, as shown here. Okay, fair enough. So, what happens then? Well, the price moves within a range again. We have some shorties who got kicked out with the counter move. And some new long is coming in, so the flow increases. Dumb money buys, buys, buys. So, it's smart money algos push the price down, down, down against them, away from the high back to the range to the stop accumulations of the dumb money. Okay, and then once they reach the main targets, what happens is the uh, dumb money goes on the other side, they go short, so what happens, the, dumb, the smart money algos switch and once they took out the main target, they push the price back against the dumb money. So shorties, again, these lose because the price is pushed up. So this is what happens basically all the time. Yeah. And then, guess what? Another switch, the dumb money goes long, so what happens? Boom! The smart money pushes the price down against those guys. Okay, so it's the opposite of supply and demand. You cannot be a serious FX trader and believe in supply and demand. Really. Once and for all. I've shown you so much here, if, if you do not understand that this here is the reality, then it's you who lives in cuckoo land. And then ask yourself whether you have a chance to compete in this market in the first place. Anyways, so, 
more buyers come in, the price goes down and takes out those plateaus. You see those pins, they take out all the stops. Remember that the Damani tends to place their stops at the recent low if they're long and above the recent high if they're short. All these things are, can be seen here. Um, okay, so let's fast forward a bit. Business as usual, okay, then some days later, price is in the middle of the range, as long as are above the price. Let's also look at the 15 minute chart here, okay? So more right, short term. So you see here, for example, long as are entering the market, the price is high, so it's well bearish, it has below all those plateaus where stop levels accumulate, etc. So that's the reason why it came down again. And of course, as often, the dumb money increases the wrong positions just to increase their drawdown. Okay, let's also look at the day chart. <coughs> as you know, it's a good idea to be aware of the day chart as well. These standard moving averages, 50, 100, 200, they tend to be places where the money places their stops. These, so these tends to be ta tend to be targets for the smart money uh, stop runs, for example. And here you see nicely uptrend, yeah, then the money still buys uh, and wants to uh, uh, profit from an increasing uh, stronger pound. <laughs> One second. Okay. Right. So. Okay, what happens then is, look, we have more than money. Long is coming into the market. Yeah, trying to buy the price of the market mid-range to the upside. Now, we have this empty of the shorties here, but obviously it's more important for the algos to first go move the price against all the longies. Yeah, it can take out the upper MTS later. And that's what happens. So they go down, you see the dumb money in response buys all the dips and thinks that, you know, they can average down and then profit from the increase. And on the 50 minute chart, you see okay, accumulation, boom, below the low, accumulation below the low. I had predicted these kind of scenarios several times. They're repetitive, okay? Um, and guess what? So once this uh, stop run is done, the lows have been cleaned. The main MTS, LTS have been taken, it goes back into the range, <coughs> okay, it's like a, a rubber band. And uh, obviously once more, long has come to the market, so once more, Smartman Igos pushed cable down against these guys. And you know, you can see also on the day chart here, for example, you know, the targets of, um, of stops at the moving averages, like here. But once this has been done, guess what, boom. They go for once the Damani tolerance is high, they go for the upper MTS accumulation of the Damani shorties, taking out that one. And now pay attention because that's what I wanted to show you here. And remember, all the other stuff I've shown is a base case. You could have made loads of trades on everything I've shown so far. But now pay attention to the, what happens in the market, the 50 minute chart. So the MTS accumulation has been taken. So the price uh, is allowed to do a breather, but short, how many shorties are coming trying to short the market down? And now we have something I call a Dominic switch. The Dominic switches are not too short. They short the market, and in this case at rather cheap prices, okay? So they want to short the up move the back down into the range. You can see it here with this red bars. This is a real support. You know the price needs to go up, okay? The smart money algos need to clean out these big positions. And that's what happens. So those short uh, positions lead the market to be pushed up because the smart money algos push it up. And guess what? They go in exaggerated fashion for the stops. They do those pins and they take out, you know, all the targets, all the guys who try to short this time at rather cheap entries. <laughs> and now this is advanced. Uh, look, this pin has been done, the stop runs, uh, the stop run has been conducted and then now with the inner range empty stop accumulations of the down money longies. So after this big stop run, you, uh, this will go down and uh, actually, you know, only the sticky uh, shorties may be able to um, be allowed into uh, a bit of profit. Remember, however, that if these people who are sticky, they will lose overall because they let their losers run and they cut the winners quickly. So that's in itself a losing strategy. But this is an advanced short trade, you know, uh, for causality traders who have more experience. The post target run, inner range move, uh, empty run, basically. So 
it goes down, takes out the empty. Some shorties come in, so directly pull back up to price in at least those shorties, as I call it. Okay, but now pay attention what happens. <coughs> so the shorties have been run, uh, subject to a run. The longies have been subject to a run. Now we have the so short-term stops as well as the empty stops, and you see it better on the forward chart. Below the price, we have all these short positions. Okay, so without question, you know, we experiencing a change in the market. Yeah. And uh, in those cases, you know um, that it doesn't make sense. If you, for example, on the wrong side and you have entered before the stop money switch, that is a situation where you need to react. In the best case, for example, you enter a hedge and once the other uh, targets are taken, then you can, you know, catch in the one leg and be on the other side again. But it's not recommended to just hold over until the money switches because it can take a, a quite a long time. We're talking a few weeks, for example. Yeah. Let's for fast forward a bit, and let me show you. Um, so the other switch. So on a 50-minute chart, on lower time frames. Yeah. Boom. Positions have been run. Upper empty of shorties. Boom. Grip back into the range. Taking out the empty, more long is buy, boom. So trend resumption back below the low. <coughs> okay, and now is really the main part of this presentation. Okay, and that's one of the very, very few scenarios where you need to be careful as a set. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. It happens now and then. So, as you know, the main run against the money long positions has been done, right? The market goes flat. Now normally, uh, for example, if more long is come, it would go again below the low and so on. However, in this scenario, in the outer range overstretched market scenario, first of all, the smart money goes up. This is a grail pattern, as you know, if you've seen the other videos. Does a grail pattern, inner range grip, takes out this big short term, medium term stop accumulation above this plateau where people place the stops so short. Boom, this is done. So the shorties are kicked out and now the longies are still in the market. Now normally the so-called Lasso principle would apply. That means those guys are into profit. Look, they bought around the prices here. Okay, these guys maybe only a bit, but those guys bought around here. So they are into profit now. <coughs> and normally, ceteris paribus, so with everything staying equal, the smart money algos would quickly push the price back down into the range, taking those guys into loss again. Like uh, like a cowboy throwing a lasso and catching a horse, for example, yeah. So that's what the lasso principle says. That and that would have had happened also here. So that's normally a short entry, for example, if the following would not have happened, which does it now. And normally the money is slow, but now suddenly the money starts shorting in big in a big way. Okay, so they enter short. So if they would just push the price down, these new shorties would all win. So this is not acceptable for smart money algos. They would rather win those old longies who already have been hunted and uh, out of which the ones with tight stops have been kicked out already. They would rather let those sticky ones win a bit rather than the big new positions win. Okay, and that's a typical dumb money switch. And Obviously, the market causality shows you that in front of your eyes. But in the, such a scenario, it's advisable to react. Look, if you see this on your chart, and if you are short, there is no point in insisting on a short. It will go against you big time. You are on the wrong side. This is a real support for the price because at this level, this big bar shows you that there's massive dumb money short activity at this price. The algos will not allow these guys to win. They will push the price up and take out their stops. They will do it in an exaggerated fashion. So here at the latest, okay, after those few hours passed, and more and more shorties come, and there's a big short nest, I call this the shorty nest, below your price. And if you are short, either close or hedge, okay? The more aggressive traders, they would even switch, go on the other side. But again, that's about, that's different for each style. So what happens? Boom. You think here, yeah, well, maybe they let those guys win. No, they just make a pin to quickly clean out the longy stops which are tight, which are close to the price. Boom. They quickly go up and, and catch in the, the shorties again. And then they go for an exaggerated up move. Okay. And this is, if you are 
If you see the this short activity and you go long, this is a high confidence long trade, okay? Because you are then on the other side. And of course in this scenario, look, as you can see, those longies, they took their profit, they're gone. Okay? They were lucky. As I said, it happens very, very rarely. But in this case it happened. That's why I'm showing you this. So those longies, look, they only got this uh, this the stop run here, but then they were lucky that the dummy of all switched on the other side, so some of them actually closed at the profit. Of course, if they try to trade the strategy over and over again, they will lose and lose and lose because they will be on the wrong side 9 out of 10 times. But in that case, they were lucky. And that makes absolute sense the more you think about it because the smart money needs to prioritize, okay? And if, if, if it's worth it to kill all these big traders who come into the market and to let a few of those guys who have been surviving the first counter move win, well, it's an easy choice. They go for this. They prioritize the stop run of these guys over the other ones. Okay, this this is this kind of advanced knowledge. These situations you can find yourself in now and then, and you need to react if you're on the wrong side. Okay, because suddenly the causality bias becomes strong, and you know exactly what will happen. <laughs> so here, I mean, even a blind person would see it. So a lot of shorties, and the price is pushed up by the short positions. The opposite is a blind demand. It's not because people buy the price go up. It's because people sell the price goes up. The smart money algos have full price control. And here you see the same on the short time frames. And guess what? They keep on selling. They short, they think, oh, I get a better price. And guess what? They push it up further, further, further against the stops. Okay? Until there's like a red brick wall below the price, which is a real support. Okay? This is... These are the things you should understand if you want to be in FX. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, it is really about understanding how the market works, what is driven, what what does actually drive the market, who has control, namely the smart money cartel. And you know, even it's it's not that simple that you can just you know um, be completely sure, for example, that yet you be on the right side it's not that simple you need to understand first of all all the details i've shown the short-term games especially if you want to trade more precisely and then you need to understand the scenarios in case of which for example some of the dumb money is lucky to to win a bit yeah. but remember the anti-learning principle over all these people will lose too okay so let's fast forward again so this is over the run has been done and then Guess what? Damali long, and you know the same game is continued. This time the other way. Damali buys, buys, buys. The smart money pushes below the low, 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 taking out their stops. Okay. I think uh, this helps a lot of people to understand what the market causality is about, because now they could observe one market over a longer time period and how the dynamics actually evolve. And as you can see, look, I mean. Depending on your trading style, there was a high number of trades you could take out of those kind of scenarios. But as I said, if you just only because your predictions are right, do not assume that every prediction will be right. Because if you are caught in a dumb money switch, well, you need to switch and you know do something about it. If you hold over, you may have a position which goes against you over several weeks. It may still come back, but you know uh, you lose time as well, and all time is also money. Okay, so I wanted to show this here. In case of the money switch, react, yeah. And um, I maybe do some videos all about the other topics I mentioned. Of course, position sizing is important. Yeah, for example, you let's say you assign a certain percentage of risk per trade, and then let's say half a percent, and then you subtract leverage from that setup depending on, let's say, minus points on your checklist. Yeah, how strong is a bias? How many how many positions are the market? How far away are the stops? Is it inner range? Is it outer range? Uh, what about the where are the plateaus on the chart? What about the medians? Uh, what about the short term, medium term, uh, long term stops? What about the H4 dynamics? Are we in a dummy, uh, are we in a H4 reversal scenario on the middle of the range? Yeah, what about when are the next news coming? Um, what kind of news ne still need to be priced in? You know, all these kinds of considerations have to be made. Yeah. Uh, trading will never be an easy activity. If anybody tells you FX is easy, run away. They have no clue. 
FX trading is a highly complex, highly demanding activity, even for the causality trader. You need to play your defense as well as your offense, okay? You can't be too biased on either side. And as I show here, if uh, the market structure changes and it's obvious, well, then don't insist on any position, change with it. You are a price taker on the down money side. You're not part of the smart money cartel. They have full price control. We don't. We are on the other side. They are market makers. We are price takers. So, you know, they will move the price in a way which makes most of the dumb money positions loose overall. But they have a clear list of prioritization. It's all programmed. It's pre-programmed. There's not much human interaction. The algos know what to do. And as you know, they don't need to know the news results because they're the first ones to react to it. They have ex execution advantage, a speed advantage, etc., etc. So, as a causality trader, you still need to evaluate. So, uh, let's say you need to price your setups correctly. If the setup has a lot of plus points, but also some minus points, well, price in those minus points by decreasing the leverage accordingly. Okay, and uh, obviously, if the if, for example, you enter in three stages, you know, you need to make the respective calculations. But I guess that's time for another video because these things are important as well. Okay. Um. Okay, so this explains to you um, why I was able to make uh, such precise predictions, but why, you know, a few, a very low number of those predictions uh, did not um, actually happen because, you know, the market structure changed. And as you can see, also from my collection, from my evidence, it's rare, but it exists. So you need to understand and know that that exists. And, um, you know, um, that shows also that the market causality is the reality in FX today, okay? Um, there are different ways, as I said, to trade it. That's up to you. But the smart money cartel will always be ahead. Accept that, you know. Do not think that you can change the market in any way. For that, you would need to be a huge, huge, huge player. Understand that, you know, it's worth for the smart money algos to maintain plausibility if the results are clear. Understand that, you know, if they already did all the main runs, they can just do a normal snap move rather back into the range. Understand that they can immediately react to unscheduled comments. They have a speed advantage. And understand that you, on the buy side, you need to have, like, a policy, you know, which, of course, depends also on your style the particular style. I have shown you my style. I have shown a lot of evidence. If you didn't bother to look at it, I recommend you to do so. I recommend you to watch the videos I made which explain market causality. I haven't shown everything. I have shown around 15% of the overall knowledge, I would think. Um, but yeah, <laughs> take advantage of this. I have, uh, you know, uh, put this together to give you a chance to understand how FX actually works. So far, there's no book, uh, no other video which covers it in such detail. So that's something, you know, which, which you can find here. Okay, I wish you all the best. Stay safe.